All right, folks, we are back live. Beach Talk Radio, Ed Ryan and Kim Ryan. Good morning. What you have to remember to do when you're on the radio or on the video is turn the microphone on. That's when it works better. See, on, it works. You're getting sound now. Okay, good. See, I'm an engineer, too. And I'm going to say it again because uh, I said it before, and I don't know if you heard it. I've been waiting for this interview for a long time. Uh, Anita Saracita is here, and she is a councilwoman for the city of Fort Myers Beach. And we're going to interview uh, Anita for a while, talk about Fort Myers Beach. Anita, thanks for coming on. I'm happy to be here, Ed. I'm glad you got the microphone on. <laughs> Thank you. So, Anita, uh, how long have you been here? Give us kind of the history of um, how, you know, how and why you're here. So um, my folks moved here in 1972. Uh, I was actually born in Tampa. I'm a third generation Southwest Floridian. Uh, there are not many of us. And uh, But anyhow, um, my folks came here in 72. At that time, if you all can imagine, those of you who are familiar with the area, uh, US 41 was a two lane road. It took about two hours to get from where we lived, which was off of Cypress Lake Drive, up to the Edison Mall, which was the only mall in town then. So that was uh, just kind of to orient you a little bit. Um, US 41 Cleveland Avenue was very much like Cypress Lake, um, or like Astero Boulevard uh, during seasons. So um, I grew up here. I graduated from high school at Cypress Lake High School. I went off to school at Florida State and moved back here to help my folks in our family business. And uh, the rest is kind of history. I just kind of rumbled on. So what, what business is it that you own? Well, I have the Pier Peddler, which is right around the corner, and Local Color. And um, uh, down at the south end of the island, uh, uh, the Islander, which I just opened. Sorry, I got my daughter Stella here, and she's a little... Uh, Besides, because of Oreo. Because of Oreo, yeah. And, and in December, we opened another store down at Santini Plaza, which is called um, the Islander. So... You know, my heart, soul, and everything else is invested in Fort Myers Beach. Okay, so um, you were down here before the uh, the beach was incorporated, correct? It was part of Lee County. Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, my folks opened the Pier Peddler in 1985, so that's, what, 33 years ago now. And um, I came back here in 1988, so a good uh, 13 years before the town incorporated. So what is that, 1995, the town incorporated? Give us a little idea how that got started and why you guys who, who I mean I'm guessing you were somewhat part of it no actually ironically I was not a part of it I knew the people who were a part of it um, it was it was driven by the Fort Myers Beach Civic Association and uh, they were very determined to uh, see the town incorporate for many reasons but uh, the primary reason was to be able to um, control the destiny of the town through land use uh, at the time, there was a hotel being built, which is now the Diamond Head Hotel, and that really was the camel that, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back uh, for this group that was working on incorporation. It kind of became an icon to incorporation. Um, many, many, many people in the town didn't want to see that uh, hotel so high. Uh, that was the primary issue with that hotel. There was also, um, uh, well, some other things, but anyhow. Um, there were about, oh, I don't know, I'm going to say three or 400 people who went downtown to protest that during a public hearing. And we spoke until almost midnight. Um, and, and they built it anyway. So that, was, that really was uh, fuel for the fire of incorporation. So uh, who was behind? Uh, so anybody could build there or was the county behind that? Uh, it, at the time, the county was uh, in control. You really do drink beer that early. Well, 50 miles this morning, so that's that's my breakfast. You want to sip? No, no, no. You no, sure? Thank, no, you don't want to talk to me after I drink. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, uh, I'm sorry, what'd you ask me, Ed? The, the was it the... <laughs> you see? I told you. So, uh, that was the county behind it, or was it just yes, people that owned it, the Yes, at the time, the county was in charge of all land use okay. decisions on the island, and so it was the county that was behind it. And the Civic Association that was spearheaded by a a wonderful gentleman named Ted Fitzsimons. He was the um, really the leader of the incorporation effort. 
Okay, so uh, get incorporated in 1995, right? 19, the, the vote was in July of 1995. The town actually became incorporated. Our date of incorporation is December 31st of 1995. And um, the elections took place from August through December. Uh, there were 26 people that ran for the first town council. No kidding. Did you have to have a certain amount of the residents that agreed to be uh, to, to get incorporated? How did that work? What's the politics of that? Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly the numbers at this moment i wish wish i had known we were going to talk about this i would have uh, i would have kind of right. recalled but um sure it had to pass by at least you know 51 percent of the of the vote and during the drive for incorporation they did a lot of scouting and recognized that their best shot at achieving the incorporation was to just do a sterile island and so that's how it passed and that's uh Bowditch beach to the last bridge exactly. Or the seven, first bridge? Seven, seven Mile Island and a thousand feet out surrounding the water, uh, surrounding the island. Got it. So 26 people run for office. Yeah. Uh, five get elected. Five get elected, including uh, you guys do it differently, right? You get elected, but you don't uh, you don't run for mayor. The the the, pre, the people on the council vote you as mayor. That's right. It's a council manager form of government, which is a form of government just like a strong mayor form of government, um, where in in Lee County. Sanibel is a council manager, Estero is a council manager, and, uh, and we are. The city of Fort Myers and the city of Bonita Springs and the city of Cape Coral, they actually, the mayor runs for office. So five people were elected and the five of us chose someone to be the mayor and the very first time it happened to be me. And you were mayor for how long? Until 1999. Okay, so at, at 19, during, uh, let's see, 1999, do you, uh, you stay on the board or do you, how long are you there for? I was on the board for four years. I had to run for re-election because our terms are every three years. Okay. I ran for re-election and, um, and, yeah, then I ran for the county commission and I lost. Oh, okay. I, 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 I mean, I've served the town in many roles. I was on the LPA, our local planning agency. I was on that board and chaired that board for several years, too, so... So you were on the uh, the original council, then you were off for how long before you came back on? Oh, 14 years. Okay, why'd you come back on? I mean, uh, politics is crazy stuff. Why, why do you want to get that kind of uh, headache and agita? <laughs> agita. I love that word. Um, you know, I don't actually feel like I ever was off because because I've always been so intimately involved with the town. People have always come to me for whatever reason. But I specifically came back on the board because there were a couple of issues and that, that were bugging me, and yeah. it had to do with land use. Okay. And uh, that drew me back. And I'm glad I'm back. Well, we're glad you're back, too. Um, now, I have to say that when I watch some of the meetings on TV, uh, they get, they get kind of long. You know, sometimes people have a lot of things to say. Is it the people in the audience that are that are rambling on, or is it the council? Um, no, I think um, you know, Lord knows, I can be long-winded myself, so I'm not going to criticize anybody on that. And, and actually, you you'll, you'll never catch me criticizing uh, the town council, whether I've agreed, um, whether I've agreed with a vote or not agreed with a vote. I am a firm believer that the council takes an action, and that action has to be supported by everyone on the council. So, um, look, in the last few years, I've been on the losing end of many votes, many votes, um, but I support the actions of the council. Got you. So there's a there's a there's quite a few large things, large projects going on down here on the beach. Give us an update on the road construction, because every weekend we come down, it looks like it's you know closer and closer to completion. It does. Uh, you know, the rain hasn't helped the construction. Uh, there are a couple of uh, issues with stormwater outfalls. And, and let me just touch on stormwater. Uh, as you drive, you've seen how much rain we've gotten lately. As this first section of the road is complete, and as you drive down the road, you can tell it's complete because there's no major puddles. But if you drove all the way to the south end, which if you guys were on your bikes this morning, you could see it. I mean, there are areas that are lake-like. Yeah. It's, it's that intense. The biggest thing that stormwater achieves, achieves other than actual drainage is it is filtering the water before it goes into our back bay and estuaries. And that is essential. And it's essential for every community to be engaging in these types of, of projects because of water quality. Um, you know, we all want to talk about 
Lake Okeechobee and other people who supposedly are responsible for our issues. But the fact of the matter is we all play a part in this and we all can play a part in remedying it as well. Awesome. So when do you think it'll be complete? What is the time frame for the road? I think the project will probably be complete in the next four to five years. Okay. You sure you don't want a beer? Since we're, we're going to talk about the road anymore, I might. <laughs> no, thanks. So the other, the other thing is that, uh, you know, the beach right now is, is, is beautiful. It's, it's, it doesn't smell. I didn't see any dead fish anywhere. Uh, it's, the breakfast is delicious. People should come down to the beach. Their parking is free. You guys were nice enough to do that until what, September 12th? Not only were we nice enough to do that, but the county has, has followed suit. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Yes, so Lynn Hall Park is also free. Um, Bowditch Point is free. Um, and that's just been an extraordinary effort by people to to try and do anything we can to encourage people to visit the islands. Sanibel's doing the same thing. And uh, where's this guy going? He's got, sometimes he's got to go to the restroom. <laughs> so, he doesn't leave during the show. <laughs> Good. Um, and so, the you know, the condition of the beach is transitory. Uh, it always has been. It always will be. There is a great article in National Geographic years ago, um, and it, it was titled, The Beaches Are Changing. And in that article, and it was talking about, amongst many things, beach renourishment. And they said, you know, every time a wave comes to the shore, your island changes. And it's true. And in our case, every time a wave comes to the shore, our island changes. What's unfortunate, I think, right now is that there's so much misinformation. I, I spoke with a woman last night who was canceling her reservation. She's from Germany. And she's canceling her reservation for November based on what she had read on a particular Facebook page and the Facebook page's comments. She canceled, she was canceling her reservation. And I encouraged her to wait because I think virtually all the hotels are either um, letting people cancel without penalties or trying to reschedule them for another time so she wasn't going to have to worry about that but this i mean next week this could be different sure. so it is you know this is a particularly fierce round of red tide but it is not something we haven't had before this has happened before uh, i was talking to an old timer and old timers are people who've been around since before i was born um and he said it was about 50 years ago um that they had red tide for almost six weeks and that it was horrible, that you couldn't really breathe down here. Down here. Now, I don't know, I haven't talked to anybody else that might have known about this, but he was pretty, pretty convincing. And so, you know, I just want to encourage people not to, much like a hurricane, this is going to pass and Fort Myers Beach is still going to be here. And so is Sanibel and so is Cape Coral and so is Sarasota. It's it isn't, it isn't going to change our lives forever. Now, uh, are you worried at all about season? <sighs> Look, I, I have three businesses, and I, I'd be lying to if you, uh, I'd be lying to if I told you I wasn't concerned. But um, does my concern rise to the level of worry? No, uh, because I grew up here. I know what these conditions are, and I know it's going to change. I also know that it's, uh, according to the Farmer's Almanac, it's going to be a particularly fierce winter up in the Midwest and the Atlantic coast. And so people are going to be looking for a place to come. And come January and February, this our beach will look normal. It will be, it will be swimmable, walkable. Not that it isn't now, but um, you just won't see any semblance of it. Now, um, Good morning. You can anything else you want to say about that to... to clear things up anything else before we hit the next one I, I think what I would really encourage people to do is if if you're concerned about um, the red tide or the conditions of the beach or um, anything anything relative to a reservation or, um, or or water quality or beach quality in general I'd encourage you to go to a source that is going to give you good information. Call your Chamber of Commerce, call your Visitor and Convention Bureau, call your town council members or town hall at 7650202. 
Um, there are there are a lot of people out there who are doing scientific work every day, and I realize I realize that there are passionate passionate people who are so upset about this episode that they can't think of anything else. But what we can't do is allow ourselves to become collateral damage to all of this. We have to continue our lives and continue to move on. So those of you who are concerned about it, I just urge you to look for good information as to the quality of our of our island. Great. Thank you for saying that. And folks, it really is beautiful down here. It's a nice sunny day. Smells. There is no smell. There's no dead fish. The breakfast is wonderful. The people are nice. Gene is here. And um, we want you to come down and enjoy the beach before it gets so crazy that you're complaining that you can't get over the bridge. Come down now. So the next big topic I wanted to talk to you about was the Margaritaville Resort. What's going on with the resort, and when am I going to go oh, be able to go over there and do my show from my personal DJ booth? <laughs> I don't know about that, Ed, but um, I can tell you that the project is delayed right now due to um, lawsuits that are pending with the town. I can't really talk about the particulars because I'm a council member. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what my personal feelings are. Um, I think it's tragic. Um, I'm sorry that um, that one or two or however many people felt uh, so bad about this decision that um, many, 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 as a matter of fact, all islanders will end up um, paying the price of this. Um, but... Um, I think that ultimately the project will go forward. I've been assured that by um, interested parties. And, um, and sooner or later, Fort Myers Beach will grow up and move into the future, uh, regardless of um, those who would want to hold it back. You guys worked so hard on that project for so long. Mr. Torgerson worked so hard on that project for so long. You got it approved. It was a unanimous approval, even though maybe some people didn't totally agree with it. It was, you guys, in the end, all came together and voted in favor of it. That's exactly right. And uh, it was nothing short of miraculous. Uh, there was, uh, that was a two-day hearing. And... Uh, the day one, there were people outside of the town council chambers in a tent waiting to speak and waiting to participate in the meeting. It was, it was intense, and um, I think it was one of the best hearings we've had because it was so vetted. I mean, it, there, was, there was nothing that wasn't scrutinized. Uh, it, it will be a, um, a tremendous advantage for Fort Myers Beach to have that project complete. It's a pity that um, there's a wrinkle in the road. Uh, I hope that ends soon, but um, that will all depend on things I have no control over. So I'm not sure if you can answer this or not, but as a council person, do you believe that the council followed all the rules to get it approved? There's no doubt in my mind we followed all the rules. Okay, so um, if it does get built, what could be a possible opening date? Any idea? I think we need to say when it opens okay. as opposed to if it does get built. Because when it opens, uh, I, I, look, I think, it could be, I think it could be as much as two years from now. And, uh, well, I mean, two years, I'm sorry, let me say that, let me say that better two years delayed. I believe the original, the original timeline was, um, the original timeline was to be three years of construction. So it could be five years from now. I just, I can't even bear the, oh, that's it. crazy. I think about it. So my wife asked an interesting question during the week as we were show prepping together. She said, is there, if a, is there a possibility that the Jimmy Buffett folks would say, this is, this is BS. I'm not, these people can't get their act together. There's people suing. I don't want any part of it and back out. Look at, I'm, I, I am not going to ask that question too. I I would find that hard to believe. Uh, but I, you know, decisions like that aren't made on a whim. 
and uh, they they knew what community they were coming into. I I, but but I can't answer that. I don't know the answer to that. Last question, and I'll let you go. What what makes Fort Myers Beach so unique? I mean, it really is the coolest beach I've ever been on because of the people and the way. I know there was some uh, there was probably some objection to taking the road out where we're sitting now and putting this putting this. Oh, was it crazy back then? Ask John Lalo one day what his objections were. He had an objection too. Look at all the tables he has out here now. John, are you crazy? So, John Lalo has been my friend more than well most of my life, and. Um, it's, it's interesting because both of us own the businesses that our fathers started. So, um, and I, I love him like a brother. But John Lalo and I came to blows over this project. It was, look, it was a tremendous change. There used to be a road coming through here, and people would sit over there at his little bar, and they would watch, of course, and they'd watch the cars go by. And these, these businesses were convinced that if you took that away from them, they'd shut down. And look, I mean, years later, uh, this is a thriving business. It's an icon of Fort Myers Beach. And um, and what makes it special? Moments like this. Um, Fort Myers Beach is uh, a community of extraordinary people. Extraordinary. I mean, you, you got some scrappy ones and you've just got uh, such an eclectic mix of um, retired CEOs, artists, um, entrepreneurs. It's just a mix like nowhere else I've ever seen. I wouldn't want to live anyplace else, as weird as it can be. Uh, it is just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the best place on earth. And, you know, living on an island, you have to have a certain temperament. And part of that temperament is dealing with situations like we're dealing with now you know it's going to move on, and um, so, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for everything. Thank you for bringing the dog. I'm, you sure you don't want a beer? I can buy you a beer before you <laughs> And please uh, stay, stay on the council for as long as you can. It's uh, awesome to have you on there and doing all the work that you do. It's been great. Thanks a lot for coming again. Thank you. Thank you. Anita Saraceda, everybody, from the uh, council, from the Myers Beach Council. And uh, we're going to have uh, an, another special guest. Thanks again, Anita. I know I've, I'm making, a, making it hard to, to get out here. And before, uh, before Kim uh, takes over with her special interview, and then, you know, we do our little, that's my sister in the back. What do you think of that hair? Huh? Get out of, what do you think of that hair? Look at that hair. Oh, she, at least she's got the puppies covered today. So um, what I wanted to mention, everybody, was our website is beachtalkradio.com, in addition to the Facebook page. If you go on there, you know, there's a bunch of stuff on there, like all the audio and all the video. There's also something brand new that we created, a Patreon account. That means if you, if you like the show, you like what we're doing, like having Anita on. Anita's going to take off now and head back to probably town hall to do more work. If you like the shows, you can be a, a supporter for as little as $2, which would help us with equipment that I buy on Amazon without telling her. Yes, I saw the... the plastic container i tried to throw them out but I mean, come on what are you 12 i was thinking about getting a mixer but i'm going to hold off on that yeah, a little mixer so we can have more mics on no not not a mixer like that and uh so you can go on there and check it out there's a there's a way to support or you could just watch and not support that's fine too we don't really care we could buy gene a couple of beers i would like to thank all of the people that have done it even though i'm not last weekend was very nice thank you all very much for that so uh, we, uh, we have a PayPal on there, and also we have um, a Patreon, which is pretty cool. I, uh, some people probably know what that is, but you didn't know what it was, right? I it's really cool. I'll, show, I'll, I'll teach you later. I'll teach you how to use it later. I thought you were mispronouncing. No, mispronouncing no, mispronouncing things. So um, we're getting into our banter now. We have to save it for later. What, uh, what we're going to do every week is uh, have a little business spotlight. And our first business spotlight of, uh, of our show is Jimmy Java's brand new uh, coffee shop that opened up uh, right down by Nervous Nelly's. I was down there today, took some pictures. I'm going to post the pictures up on the Facebook page in a little bit. And Kim's going to take over, and Jimmy's going to take my chair, and they're going to do a nice uh, interview together. Here you go, wife. All right. Come have a seat. Let's do it. Exactly. Production quality here is extremely ah. nice. Who gets to play on the beach? 
Good morning to you, sir. We're so glad to have you today. It's wonderful to be here. And thank you. He already brought the gifts, so we will be talking about this and drink <laughs> only the best and drinking it. And I, I have to say, right off the bat, that I was looking last night and I love the logo. Is that you? Oh no, that's my partner. Oh, okay. He's a forty-year-old and drinks about a quarter of this a day. And he looks just like that. And with a three-year-old kid. Well, it's very, very cute. So tell us a little bit about your business, how you got started, where you originated. and Well, I'm originally out of California, so we do everything cool. And we're trying to bring some of that coolness down here to the beach. Um, we started here in uh, Southwest Florida about five years ago um, doing our coffee. In the Cape, right? We, we have our manufacturing capability up in Cape Coral. And where we've been retail up till now has been in uh, farmer's markets. We're in all the big farmer's markets during the season. Uh, we're down in Marco. We're all the way up to uh, Sarasota. We're, uh, we're also, yeah, you can buy us in all of the Southwest Florida and uh, Orlando area Whole Foods. Right. Um, here locally, we're in Bailey's. We're in Ada's. We're in Wind's Market. Um, a lot of places have a lot of restaurants use this. And I saw on the website that you also will ship, at least within the United States, right. with free shipping. Everything's free shipping. Free shipping, folks. Those, eat your heart out. That's so. That's that's fantastic. People have access to everything, and we feel we feel we have an obligation. Once we get you hooked on this, we have to supply it. There just is. It's an obligation. Yes, people love their coffee. Ethical pushers. So you have not only, obviously, hot coffee, but you also have this fantastic nitro right. brew. Actually, we have it, and you can buy it in a can or resealable bottles down uh, at the joint, our Jimmy's Java joint down at 450 Old San Carlos Boulevard on uh, just this side of uh, Nervous Nellie's. And next to the, the vape, vape shop. We're right next to the vape store. Um, you can buy that down there. We've also got uh, 32 ounce and 64 ounce growler, refillable growlers um, in a, for sale down there. We also, uh, we do have a kegerator, so we serve uh, cold, you know, the Java right into cups uh, over ice. We also make uh, shakes. We make all sorts of drinks uh, with the cold brew. We mix it with uh, protein powders, with boost powders, all that. We'll have all those on Monday, so you can come in and get your, your boost. Uh, in addition, we have grab-and-go food. Uh, right. We do bagels, bagel sandwiches. We get all our bagels from Stuff a Bagel in Cape Coral. Um, they're fresh every morning. Uh, Sorry, he's very distracted. You know, the road crew here is just a little bit, you know, Trying demanding. To her during her yeah, interview. yeah. Well, it's not what it's just to enhance her professionalism. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's a beach. Yeah, professional for the beach. My goodness, have another shot. <laughs> of espresso yes exactly but we also do uh we do like i said bagel sandwiches we have fresh muffins fresh cookies uh, we'll have scones on monday so oh, but basically scones are the best oh my scones rock oh, um, totally coming yeah oh they're they're homemade scones so i've been making them for about 15 years you have blueberry? i will have blueberry scones oh, for you my so we don't do a lot of stuff but right. what we do is, we it's, do well. we're not trying to compete with the restaurants up here right. that are doing breakfast. No cook to order, none of that. What we do right. is assemble the sandwiches. Um, some of the stuff we pre-cook, like our bacon and things like that, we bake it on premise. The eggs we bake, we, we cook it beforehand, have them ready to okay. go. But we don't, you know, we assemble the sandwiches. Um, what are some of the coffee offerings you have as far as the different... Good question. Blends, right blends. now, what we do, we found most people, they love our Sanibel Sunrise. That's our medium roast morning blend. It's awesome. Um, I challenge anyone to find a better morning roast coffee anywhere. Definitely not in Florida. Um, we also have, uh, as a daily offering, our Matt Lachey Midnight, which is a darker roast. It's the same blend. These are both three bean blends. They're both post-roast blended. Um, but this is a little bit more robust. Still a smooth finish, but for people that want to have a little bit more punch in the uh, taste-wise, taste-wise. You, of course, know you always get more caffeine out of your, your lighter roast. But, so we've got that. And then we also do usually our Captiva Calm, which is our decaf. Right. 
Right. And one of the things we specialize in are decafs. Um, our decafs are uh, rock your socks. They don't taste like decaf. They taste like coffee. So, and we'll be offering those plus probably eight to ten different single origins uh, in the store, bagged in the store. We'll have those next week. Great. Um, so we'll be people will be able to buy that. We also have my merchandise. We have T-shirts. Uh, we'll have mugs coming in. We'll have uh, we have a lot of other stuff coming on our as we get it from our our purveyor. And we were talking a little bit before um, before you got on. Oh, thank you. About the health, many health benefits of coffee and caffeine. So I doubt that Ed knows any of these, but could you illuminate us on some of the health benefits that we spoke of? Stop. Um, caffeine is a wonder drug. Um, it, it's all based basically from the fact that it easily crosses the blood-brain barrier. What that allows you to do is uh, your caffeine, just generic caffeine, is like in a regular cup of coffee, is, is good for people with Parkinson's disease, for instance, uh, which is one of the big uh, advancements they found that the, the caffeine actually works in the hippocampus to help uh, people that have Parkinson's to hold off the, the uh, symptoms. Um, we've also found with our caffeine in our cold brew, we have extremely high caffeine because of the way we make it. We actually have a patented processor making it. Our right. process in itself is patented, and uh, it concentrates the caffeine and the flavor. Um, what we found, and this is totally empiric, we haven't, no labs have done anything with this, is that you can drink this, you can drink a lot of this, and all you do is get energy. You don't get jittery. Or if you sit down and drink four or five cups of coffee, you're, you know, you're like a gecko on the wall. Right. Uh, with this, you don't get that way. You just get energy, and you don't get the crash from this. And we think that's because of low acid. We think that the low acid is um, doesn't trigger something with the caffeine to cause the jitters. So great, uh, jitter-free love. That's, <laughs> and I think there's a lot of, from my research, um, healthy antioxidants yes. that are in. Yep, yep absolutely. Um, the way we make it, um, when you get coffee, typically uh, hot coffee out of a, um, you know, regular brewed coffee. They use the black filters or the brown paper filters. That filters out all the good stuff. Uh, that's all your antioxidant properties, all your antimicrobial properties, all of that. The actual food, the groundies in there, the food, it filters it out. So you're not getting a lot of the benefits that you get from a cold filter, like a French press um, coffee, a hot, or our cold brew coffee, which comes, sometimes you'll get fines in the bottom like a Turkish coffee. That's good stuff. You want that. So. Well, that. I also read, and you may not this ed i do i do i do so apparently a 2006 study said that if you drink one cup of coffee a day well the research takes a long time to do and even longer time to be published send money in right you're 20 percent listen you're going to want to hear this you're 20 percent less likely to develop liver cirrhosis so if you're drinking Ship alcohol, on that one. you really need to be drinking as much, if not more, of the coffee. You know, that brings up another really good use for our cold brew. There you go. It makes an awesome mixer. We call it Jimmy's After Dark. We, also, we have a brand new uh, line of mixers that were flavored mixers, flavored with organic flavoring, to be used at, in the evening. Uh, you know, you get a little older, 8 o'clock, you want to go to bed. Yeah. But you still yeah. want to hang out with people. You have a cocktail made with a uh, one of our after dark, wow. and uh, you can throw whatever your favorite adult beverages in there, and you get another shot of energy. Six Keep going. Wow. And you're gonna offset awesome your awesome with rum. Nice. You got some? I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it in the well, morning. Yeah. We're gonna take it home. Oh, absolutely. Try it. Yeah, and at eight o'clock you'll. But it's um, our new line. We should we'll be releasing it next month. Um, comes in eight ounce bottles, and the Original flavors are going to be uh, hazelnut, but that's non-sweetened hazelnut. It's hazel. right. It'll be a savory. If you've ever had the herb savory, um, it's, or it's a blend, but it'll be savory, which is awesome with um, bourbon. Um, we've had to test that. Now we're back to all yeah. that testing, yeah. and that costs money. Yes. Um, we've also got a, a mango, or a habanero and a wow. smoked. We do a smoked and a habanero. Those mixed together with, well, anything is off the chain. Anything with habanero. And, oh, we also, 
if we want to segue to the culinary aspect of this, our cold brew has been the main ingredient in Shannon's uh, steak sauce at Nevermind for four years. So you can, coffee's wonderful. You can use it for everything. Multi-use. Yeah. So, Do you want to say something? Are you reaching for the microphone? She's such a mic hog. So I have, I, I want to, I know I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, and you can say no if you want. By the way, you 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 could be you could have your own radio show. You got it going on, man. I had my own radio show, but go on. Oh, you have. We used to, our original Jimmy's Java was up in the mountains of North Carolina, and one of the things we did was we streamed all our. We had live music. We had three thousand square feet with a stage, live music. Wow. We mixed. We did the whole thing, and we streamed it. But this is back in the early two thousands before. That was a big deal. Before podcasting came big. It was, yeah, way before all of that. And we um, we would stream. We had a lot of Americana music. Uh, and, whatnot, and we were right there with ASU at uh, uh, in Boone, North Carolina. And that's, we've been there, done that. Gotcha. <laughs> so I want to put you on the spot a little bit. And you can say no. And I want to see if anyone's actually listening to us or watching us. How about if we do a little giveaway? Is that, how about we... Are you are you making that? No, no, no. I don't. I don't want you to give away your money or anything like that. What I well here. This is this is free cups of coffee. Well, here's what I wanted to do. You save those, or I'll, I'll actually we'll give those away. Okay. The first ten people that come in that say they heard you on Talk Radio, free cup of coffee. I'll be better than that because we're talking hundreds of people. Anybody who comes in. Anybody who comes in and says they heard me on Beach Talk Radio, okay, they get a free eight-ounce cup of coffee. Anybody that comes in and donates two dollars to this podcast <laughs> gets a free twelve-ounce cup. Of coffee. Wow, people, come on! It's located right. Gene, can you wheel down there and get a cup of coffee? Come on, we'll push you down there. So it's located between uh, what are the two well, the big? I tell people is it's it's at the base of the hotel, the inn at the harbor down there. It's it, right between Nervous Nellies and Sob. So if you go past Sob, you'll see us down on the right hand side. If you get to Nervous Nellies, you went too far. Right, right. Okay, so you heard it, folks. Free coffee if you go down there. See Jimmy in his nice green shirt and his cool hat. Did I? Uh, you, you good to go, or you had any more questions? Anything else you want to talk about before we let you go back to work? Just send two bucks. <laughs> character right there. That's why he's on the beach. Another character on the beach. Excellent. Well, thanks. This was fun. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. And good luck over there with the new business. We appreciate that. And you heard it, folks. Free coffee if you go down to Jimmy Java's, located between Nervous Nellies and SOB. And, oh, Tony's, Tony, where did Tony go? We need to have, oh, Tony, I want you to, Tony, come on over. we got to have Tony on for a little bit. Thank you for the free coffee and the free, uh, thank you, guys. That is Jimmy Javis located right here in Fort Myers Beach, folks. If you're not doing anything and you want something for free, is she hugging him? Then come on down to uh, <laughs> Jimmy Javis. This is uh, my friend Tony. We've known each other for 30, 40 years now. We uh we rode uh, our bikes this morning starting at uh, four thirty ish, right? Yeah, five for me. Tony's really um uh, progressed on the bike riding. Uh, he used to just to come with his hundred dollar bike, and now he's got clip on shoes and uh, special special fitting last yeah. week. Yes, yes. Not so sure about it right now, but we'll see. What, what does it fitting mean? Ah, uh, they check your your fitting on the bike. So you're not leaning. So do you far. fit? I, it doesn't feel like it, no. You look like you fit, though. You look like you're a smooth rider now. Okay. All right. Well, it was the first long ride with the new fit and the clip-in, so I guess I'll have to ride again and see what the difference is. All right. Is. That's not really why I had you on. I, I, I wanted to bring him on because he needs to tell the story about how he got engaged. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to tell the story. This is a cool story. So he's got these clip-on shoes on. You had the clip-ons, right? And what is the first thing your then girlfriend says to you about the clip-ons? That I'm definitely going to fall over the first time I ride. So, folks, let me rewind a little bit. I got clip-ons for two weeks, and I fell um, in the middle of uh, Tree Line. And for those of you that live down here, you know where this is. Tree Line and uh, uh, what is it? Where am I? Yes. Daniels. Tree Line and Daniels. Right in the middle of the road because I didn't unclip my shoes. That's why I sent them back to Amazon. So, uh, so you have your clip-ons back. You have your clip-ons, and what happened? Yep, and Jamie, my girlfriend, who is an avid rider and an Iron Man. The story, dear. You got to listen to the story. Um, tells me that, guarantees me that I'm going to fall over the first time I ride with clip-ins. 
which I'm saying, don't say that. I don't want to know that. Well, I don't want to ride like that. Anyway, we go for our virgin ride, and I did not fall over for the record, but I did fake a fall. Wait, you let her go ahead of you? Yeah. I let her get ahead of I really didn't let her get ahead of me. She's always ahead of me. Um, she's a better rider. Well said. Well put. Um, but I, I faked a fall in, in anticipation of her coming back, and then I would already be down to propose to her. So she came back and almost punched me in the face after finding, finding out that it was a fake fall. Did you have ketchup and blood all over no, your face? I did not. No, I didn't. I, just, I was in the fetal position like on the ground, like though. Sideways. It looked like you had I made it look blood. good. I made it look good. Um, so what did she say? She said yes. Yeah. So when is the date? Have you set a date? No, we've talked about it. No, no set date yet. Are you thinking this year, next year, five years from now, ten years from now? Uh, at least within the next year. Kids on the way? No kids. We're all done with kids. Awesome. Well, that is a great story. Uh, you told me that for the first time this morning. Actually, you were here the day... You were here. We were here drinking and hanging out and doing the show. And it, and then the next day, all of a sudden, on Facebook, you're engaged. Yeah, and? Why didn't you tell us? It was my story. I didn't want it out. All right. Well, it's out now. It's all over the interweb now and all over the Facebook. Everybody knows about it. It's a lovely story. Thank you for coming on, Tony. Anything else you want to talk about? No, thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. And here we are again, folks. There she is. Look at how pretty she is. So last night... You know what, folks? I'm so happy Ozark is back on. It seems like it took forever. We love that show. Yeah, it is a great show. I, I don't know why it took so long, but it is a very good show. It was. It seemed like it was the same way with the House of Cards. It just takes forever for Netflix to get out the content, no? Is it Netflix? It, it, it is Netflix, yeah. I think it's Netflix, right? I, I just asked you. So anyway, so House of Cards last night. I, I'm sorry. He's, I'm getting distracted. So last night we start watching Ozark again, and I look to my right, and all of a sudden your shirt's off. Like, I mean, what were you doing last night? Totally naked. Not totally, but I, I turned to the right, and what was going on there? So many, many women will know how to do this. Sometimes after you're done working out, mm -hmm, you, you're all sweaty. So you have to get your sports bra off. So you try to do the, you can take it. Go ahead. Demonstrate if you want. You can take stuff off without taking everything off. Well, everything was off. I'm. What were you? No, that is not. That is not true. Okay. It was. It was it a figment was, of my imagination. Yes, it was the wrangling that goes on underneath your clothes that women have to deal with. What you guys are doing in the car too, and you're trying to get dressed in the car while you're driving, and you know people worry about texting, but women are trying to get yeah get their makeup on before work because they don't get up early enough. Oh, I heard about a lady who was in an old style car with a bench seat changing a baby while she was driving. Get out. No, you just made that up. Nope. Nope. How am I going to make that up? Wow. She, I mean, I can't even imagine that. That, does, that doesn't seem like it's possible. You can drop. Yes. And changing the baby right there. No, I nobody can it. change a baby with one hand. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Please. Every woman needs to ring in on all the things we can do and multitask. It just because you are too uncoordinated to do anything with two hands. Gene taking off? Yes, I'm like a tree and going to leave. All right, everybody say goodbye to Gene. I think we ran into overtime. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Calabash, wherever you're at. And go Buckeyes. He's going to watch the game after he goes to the Little Club. And we'll see you tomorrow, right, Gene? All right, we got a few more minutes left in the show, dear. Uh, what else you want to talk about that happened to you this week? Well, do we want to talk about the incident with uh, my medical stuff? Oh, well, if you feel like boring people with that, go right ahead. I would just encourage everybody who's ever had anything done when you get a bill in the mail to review your bill. And when you call to discuss the bill, and they hang up on you, that's a whole nother level of problematic. So we need to rewind a little bit and tell people why we have a bill. I had a little accident in January. Yeah, so we're driving, riding the bikes down tree line and somebody got a flat tire and parked in the bike lane. And- Illegally parked in the bike lane. Well, yeah, and so- And it was on a curve. A slight curve. Somebody was riding their bike and uh, doesn't keep her head up. 
she kind of rides with her head down and, uh, yeah, smashed right into the back. Broke the window. And what else did you break? You On broke your face. I broke my face, but I was wearing a helmet. Yes. So even though I was knocked out, I survived. A um, lot of dental issues and a scar, but I'm good. I'm good now. Now I'm just figuring out how to pay for it all because there's it's very complicated yeah. insurance companies and all that just like we're dealing with with the roof but nobody wants to know about our problems no all right folks so uh, we want you to come down to the beach you get free coffee if you mention beach talk radio at Java Jimmy Javas you get free coffee he said so he said he was gonna give away something else too right a bigger coffee or something bigger coffee if they had donated that's right they donate the two dollars so if you go to support it yeah, you, that's right. You weren't supposed to use the word donate. So if you go to the Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach, the Beach Talk Radio website, you can click on be a Patreon. That'll take you to our page where you can support us for $2 if you like what we're doing. If you don't like what I'm doing, we're doing, then that's cool too. No big deal. And uh, then you get a free cup of coffee when you go down to Jimmy Java's, which is located between Nervous Nellie's and SOB. And uh, we apologize. I apologize for last night episode that we tried to pull off here last night but sometimes you're at we didn't she didn't show up I wasn't here. she doesn't like to come twice in a row so and the show is not the same without her here we always we, we have to do it together it's really not a show um and although I, I shouldn't say that the guests were very nice last night the guests were good yeah. Yeah, except for it. we're at the mercy of the wi-fi and uh, apparently uh, at night the wi-fi doesn't work too well but we had high tide on there an awesome band it sounded like it was very i was on the bike watching on inside on, yeah i was on a stationary bike. a little afraid to ride outside after that she broke her face there's angie and so um we apologize for that but uh we are going to be here every saturday morning at nine o'clock we want you to come to the beach because it's actually a beautiful day today it is it's fantastic the sky is blue there's very few clouds the temperature is perfect the humidity is better today than it's oh, yeah. been oh, yeah. there's no smell so please come on down, support the businesses, enjoy beach. the beach. The, uh, the beer is cold. I'm sorry. Sometimes you go on a little longer than you should, and I have to cut you off. According to who? You? True. So do you want to say hi to your sister and anybody, your family? Hi, Mom. I hope my sister's feeling better, still dealing with her back. Three ruptured discs. So How did she do that? She was bending over to pick something up at work, and it's the stick that breaks the camel's back. Not that she's a camel. It's just a saying. All righty. So uh, we'll see you guys again next Saturday at 9 o'clock. Always check the website and always check the Facebook page because we love to post news about what's going on here on Fort Myers Beach. Now I just feel like I'm rambling on and we okay, probably should just go. cut it let's off. Okay, folks. Coffee. Yeah, let's drink some coffee. Thanks. Have a great day and come to the beach and have a lovely holiday. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>